even though Mayor Pete is in a distant fourth nationally, well, in Iowa and New Hampshire, he is leading, unfortunately, with 5.7 and 3 points, respectively. Now, he's probably not going to get very far with almost no support from black voters, but still, win or lose, this individual has proven to be an incredibly destructive force in Democratic Party politics, because what we are fighting for, he's actively fighting against. So... An example, of course, is Medicare for All. Going into this race, he supported Medicare for All, and he claimed that Medicare for All was actually the compromise between the Affordable Care Act and a national health system. But fast forward a couple of months, he starts taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from the health industry, and now he's using their talking points against Medicare for All. But that in and of itself isn't the problem. The problem is that he's effective at destroying public support for Medicare for All, because since he started to use their talking points against Medicare for All, support for Medicare for All has decreased, while support for a public option has been on the rise. Now, even if he were able to codify his Medicare for All who want it into law, that would still lead to people dying, because what it means is healthcare would still be a commodity, like video games, for example. So if you can't afford it, you don't get health care. And furthermore, even if you can afford his version of Medicare, uh, where you can buy into it, well, you would be denied the subsidy if you're an immigrant. As the Washington Post's Dave Wagle reports, after Latino event, I asked Buttigieg if non-citizens could access benefits of Medicare for all who wanted. He says they could buy in, but not get subsidies. Medicare for all legislation covers non-citizens. So that's why I say win or lose, this individual is destructive. Because he is incredibly cruel. Like, Democrats are denouncing Donald Trump's disgusting child separation, zero tolerance immigration policy. But then, Mayor Pete is saying, you know what, under my proposal... If you are not a citizen, you don't get this subsidy, which means that you can't get health care uh, because you most likely won't be able to afford it. And as a result, you get to die. So how can you denounce Donald Trump's cruelty if you're also inhumane yourself? This policy is xenophobic, even if Democrats refuse to use the X word against one of their own. That's what this is. So this individual is destructive. He's working against the grassroots. And it's not just when it comes to the issue of Medicare for all. Another issue is free college. He's been vociferously arguing against it, saying that, you know, Bernie's free college plan doesn't take into account people who don't want to go to college or uh, trade schools. And on top of that, you know, Bernie, he just wants to pay for the, the children of millionaires and billionaires to go to school. So this is an individual who is a snake and he cares about nothing. He stands for no policies. All he wants is to get elected. He's a careerist. That's Mayor Pete in a nutshell. But thankfully, Bernie Sanders was asked about Mayor Pete in an interview on MSNBC with Chris Hayes, and he thoroughly schooled Pete Buttigieg, and this was glorious to watch because I have been waiting for Bernie Sanders to put this little dipshit in his place, and finally, Bernie Sanders delivered, and really, he clowned on Pete Buttigieg. This was just fantastic. What do you say to that argument that there's no reason to, to pay for people who can pay well, for it? Well, I say Buttigieg is wrong on both counts. Number one, of course, when we talk about making higher education, public colleges and universities tuition free, we mean not only college, but we mean trade schools as well. There are millions of good jobs out there in construction and all kinds of areas where people are good at working with their hands. They don't want to go to college. And of course, we are going to make uh, tuition, uh, tuition free for those people. So what he's saying is not accurate. Second of all, there is the issue of universality. I'm very glad that Mr. Buttigieg is, is, is worried that I have been too easy uh, on upper-income people and the millionaires and billionaires, that I'm going to allow their kids to go to public colleges and universities, just, by the way, as they do go to public schools right now. Trump's kids can go to any public school, uh, elementary school, high school in the country, tuition-free. But the point is, I happen to believe that when you talk about programs like Social Security, like health care, like higher education, they should be universal. The way you pay for them and the way I do it, not the way Buttigieg does it, is I do demand that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, that the very rich will start paying their fair share of taxes, as will corporate America. You pay for it by raising revenue from the very rich, but then you say in a very simple way, 
that any person who wants a higher education, college, trade school should be able to do it. You know, right now, that's what we do with Social Security. It is a popular program. It is a universal program. That was absolutely glorious. Um, <laughs> I loved every second of that. What Bernie Sanders says in making, you know, this point about universality, it really does matter because the universality of programs means that they will have staying power. You can't attack a program that is universal if you want to be elected because these programs are loved by everyone. And I love that Bernie Sanders used Social Security as an example. Now, the reason why means testing is something that isn't popular among the progressive left is because, um, first of all, they're less popular if you means test the program. Second of all, it's more difficult for working class Americans to access these programs if they're means tested because they have to prove that they're poor enough to benefit from that program. And also, it creates resentment from, you know, members of the middle class against the working class. It kind of pits them against each other and people in the middle class think, well, why do these working class people get this program? But I don't get it, right? Look, the goal is everyone pays into a benefit and ev everyone receives that benefit. That's good public policy making. That's how you create policies that will last for generations to come. And even if politicians will covertly chip away at it, right? We see the same thing happening with Tories in the UK with their NHS. They're never going to directly undermine it, which means it will be easier in the long term to defend if you keep this capitalist system in place. Now, my favorite quote was Bernie Sanders said, I'm glad Mr. Buttigieg is worried. I've been too easy on upper income people and the millionaires and billionaires. That was such a great line because nobody is harder on elites than Bernie Sanders. And coming from Mayor Pete to concern troll about, you know, the children of millionaires and billionaires getting free college. This jackass has taken more money from billionaires than any other Democrat. And out of all the people, all of a sudden, he's going to claim that he doesn't want to implement a policy that benefits millionaires and billionaires? I mean, give me a break. Does anyone believe that Pete Buttigieg believes what he's saying? And we know why Pete Buttigieg is saying this, right? This is pseudo-adversarialism. He wants to make it seem as if he is as left-wing as Bernie Sanders, or more left-wing than Bernie Sanders in this instance, so he tries to find a way to leapfrog Bernie on the left and attack Bernie from the left by saying, no, actually, uh, your policy, which benefits the working class, is actually bad because it also simultaneously would benefit the rich. Okay, well, first of all, most rich people, if you, you know, are a millionaire or a billionaire, you're going to send your kids to private school. But if you don't, well, you paid for that program, you paid the most for that program. Fine, I don't care. Like, the goal is to make sure that working class people can go to college and not be burdened with debt for the rest of their lives. But elitist Pete isn't in favor of that. Why? I don't know. I mean, out of all the progressive policy proposals, free college is one of the cheapest. It's like 80 billion. You can easily finance that fully and keep it solvent with a financial transaction tax on Wall Street. But yet he doesn't even want to do that. Like the bare minimum to prove that you're progressive, Pete won't even do that. So what Bernie Sanders said here was great. And I really wish that Bernie Sanders would go on the offense of more. I mean, he didn't really have a choice because he was asked the question and he simply responded. But I would love to see Bernie actually point out that the reason why Mayor Pete all of a sudden is a centrist after entering this race as a progressive is because he started taking money from the industry, right? He supported Medicare for All and is now against it after taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from the health industry. Call out this fraud and expose him for the fraud that he is so his career in politics will be over and we don't have to deal with him every four to eight years with the establishment trying to ram him down our throats. Like, I'm so sick of him already and nobody has even cast a vote and he's leading in Iowa and New Hampshire. So, you know, more Pete would have judged is bad for the left and it's bad for the Democratic Party because if he were to be the nominee or remain someone who is relevant in Democratic Party politics, I mean, they're just going to continue to lose because nobody likes this centrism that isn't actually going to benefit their lives. So Pete Buttigieg offers nothing and Bernie Sanders here kind of um, exposed him for the hollow fraud that he is. Beta male.